Good morning, everybody. Today is the National Day of Prayer Day. And our day start very, started very early at 8 o'clock this morning in ball ground with prayer by several civic leaders and several folks. And it was an amazing turnout. It was a little bit noisy. I don't know if y'all have been to downtown ball ground lately, but we have a lot of traffic on 372. Do you know why we have a lot of traffic on 372? Because we didn't get the truck bypass. But I heard a rumor that the bypass is going to happen I hope in my lifetime, because this morning it was pretty tough, but it was amazing to see so many people coming out. We're going to share some pictures of that. Our pastor, Jeff Brown, from First Baptist Church in Ball Ground, was one of those who was speaking and praying for our country, for our nation, for the world. And I love that we came together. That's what small communities do whether you're the old timer, the newcomer, or whatever. And speaking of old timers, one of our oldest sponsors, Paul Kiker, is going to be with me in just a minute. And you're gonna to get to hear his take on what is our country, why are we praying? We're praying for our educators, we're praying for our business, we're praying for the schools, we're praying for the police officers. And, and sadly, yesterday in Atlanta, we saw um, an event happen because somebody who had a military career dealing, obviously, they said he had some emotional problems. I'm not sure what was going on, but there was a murder in Midtown Atlanta. Y'all, I grew up in Midtown Atlanta and um, haven't been back there for a while. But Midtown, Ansley Park, uh, Garden Hills, the communities that we knew and loved, those communities are still there and it's still so important to keep them safe. We need to pray for our police officers. We need to pray for America. And Paul's gonna join me shortly and we're gonna share a little bit of that. But I wanna show you some photos and a little bit of the footage from the National Day of Prayer today in Ball Ground. And uh, it was a beautiful, beautiful sunny morning. It was very, very chilly. You can tell I've got on a sweater today because I was frozen. And that's, that's something I'm very proud of. You talk about prayer. You see that man, Lonnie Fountain? That's my son-in-law's back. If you go see Lonnie, you're going to hear a prayer. And I think that is so awesome that he starts his day with prayer. He starts his fishing tournaments with prayer. Can I tell you, he's won the last three out of four Lonnie is a praying man. That is so very important to me as his mother-in-law. And this is some of the group in ball ground this morning. It was chilly. It was very, very chilly. It's kind of like not a normal May day. Um, usually we would expect it a little bit warmer, but I guess this is the longest Blackberry winter I ever remember. <clears throat> I sure don't remember one this long before. But this was just a great group of locals and um, again, some newcomers, some old timers. We know this community, we know these people and we love them. And it's so cool that we can get together and we can pray for our nation. That is so very important. When you look around the crowd, there are people who haven't been in ball ground but a couple of years. There are people who've been in ball ground all their lives. There's a, a multitude of different pastors who came to the community and, and some of them were new. I think one of the pastors said he'd been there six years, so we call that a newcomer. And we are all thinking about the same things. We want a good life for our family. And you know where a good life starts? At home. Just like if you pray at home with your children and you send them to school, then they're gonna have a better school day. And I think that is so important. So let's keep prayer in the home. Let's keep prayer in the businesses. Let's keep prayer. You know, it's a shame, but we took the Ten Commandments out of the places it probably is needed the most. And um, speaking of needing somebody the most, you know, I have needed Paul Kiker's encouragement for many, many years. And he is an encourager. And I said, those are one of the things that I love about the people that we share with you. Paul's been sharing his, his ability to do amazing things for many, many years with you. He's been sharing his family with you and you all know you have watched as his family. Speaking of family, there's our real estate family. That's uh, Jane Neighbors who has been our broker for 20 years and her husband Joel in a house that is very, very close to my heart because that was my grandmother's best friend's home in the early 1900s. 
and now it is coming to be an office where we will be working and um, just an amazing, amazing opportunity to get to stay in the community that we love. That's what it's about. Fall in love with ball ground, fall in love with Jasper, fall in love with the mountains, Paul Kiker. Yes. Yes, now how are you? Wait a minute, we got you Bass Ackards. Sorry. There you go. 15 years is the first time I've ever no, been late. we'll have to do it that way. Well, honey, you can be late because I know that you have things going on. You've got you. a lot going on. Thank He's you. got a lot going on. <laughs> and I don't know if you've noticed it or not, but we are praying. We are yes. praying for our nation. We are praying in our offices. We are praying for the unborn. We are praying for so many things today. And I honestly believe that prayer changes things. Um, it's so think. funny. I was at the prayer meeting and then I got this call that I really needed to hear this morning. And I was like, well, Lord, that one was fast. <laughs> We don't usually get those prayers answered quite so fast, but what have you been up to? Just trying to make sure we've got everybody in the right place and, and scary. Read the read the tea leaves and signs as best we can. Try to find wisdom in the midst of a world that's just inundated with information. Yes. And quite often inundated with incorrect information. And I was yes. talking to somebody yesterday about how we get our information, I hate to say this, but it's the truth, off of Facebook, Twitter, Internet, Instagram, you name it. Mm -hmm. And if you see it in print, then you think it's real. Maybe you should go to a source that's been around for over 130 years. The local newspapers usually check their facts. They did. The local newspapers check their facts. Facebook doesn't, they say they have those facts fact checkers they're not really fact checkers they they thought that i had been something derogatory about chiggers because i got <laughs> bit by a bunch of chiggers in alabama and they kicked me and put me in facebook jail for seven days over a chigger over bite. chigger yeah so you should have said they thought bite. that i had said no they thought i was meaning another word oh oh and they didn't get their act together that's what happens when computer algorithms are exactly exactly yeah. the local newspapers check their facts before they print it. If there's a front mm -hmm. page story, I can guarantee you somebody knows that it was correct. If there's a front page story and it is about somebody you knew and loved, then you love seeing that in our local paper. If you see it on Facebook and you assume that it's the truth, no. 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 Just because it's on the internet doesn't no. mean it's true. No, doesn't mean it's true. Do you get phone calls sometimes because somebody saw something on you know, the internet and they're like, oh, I saw so-and-so's happening. Is that right? And you have to, no, that's oh, not yeah, right. Oh, I, yeah, I do. I get that or, or I, they were playing golf with somebody or they're talking to a friend. And, mm -hmm. you know, I remember I used to laugh about it to myself years ago, but, but we're all susceptible to that. Now. Oh, sure, sure. I mean, it's yeah. just society unless you take the time to go look. Yep. Because really, I mean, the mainstream media doesn't doesn't really consider facts. Mm -hmm. I mean, you mm -hmm. got you got men playing in women's sports, so don't even get me started. We're going to have a war zone. Oh, I've been it on a war path. I've been on a war path about that lately. Yeah, yeah. If you have children who have worked all their lives to be winning swimming champions, and they have a female anatomy. I couldn't go up against you for anything. There's no way. Well, there are things that you that you could. I mean, God created yeah, us. I can pump gas. God created us it. different and combined <laughs> yeah. together we're, we're better. Mm -hmm. But men have certain strengths and women have certain strengths. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. And that's the problem. We're, we're in a society today where, where, where feelings matter more than facts mm -hmm. and feelings mm -hmm. matter more than truth. Mm -hmm. And um, Sad. Yeah, it is. Sad. So the prayer makes a difference. I want to throw three things out at you because okay. you are a North Georgia boy, but you do a big world business. Ansley Park, Garden Hills, and Morningside. Okay, I grew up in Atlanta in neighborhoods that were once known as a safety zone. We could walk the community. I could push my child in her stroller mm -hmm. all over Morningside. And yesterday there was a murder and multiple shots in Midtown, which is where I grew up. Oh, wow. Okay, when you think about that, and then you read on the internet that the young man had just been discharged from the uh, Coast Guard, he possibly had been, um, they were concerned about medication he was on. When you think about that, if Holly said, Paul, I want to go to Ansley Park today, I want to go see some beautiful homes, would you feel safe sending your wife to these places that I grew up in? Absolutely not. 
it's scary. I, and I'm not that familiar with those the, those areas. Well, they but. were very affluent, very great neighborhoods. Yes. Very great neighborhoods with a safety net. We all knew our neighbors. We felt safe. We could walk here. We mm -hmm. could walk there. And we did that. We could walk to Kroger and push a little grocery mm -hmm. buggy if we didn't want to drive our car. It was kind of like what we're hoping to develop mm -hmm. in Ball Ground, a community that walks places and mm -hmm. feels safe. But as a mountain boy, because you're kind of a mountain boy, yeah, um, yeah. if I were going to go to Atlanta, I would want a male to go with me. Right. I would want a Paul Kiker, I would want a whoever to go and to have a gun with him. Yeah. Isn't that sad? That well, we've come to that? And it's not only that. I mean, you know, just just when, when I'm in Atlanta with my family, I make eye contact with people as they come along. And, and I try to be as soft as possible, but firm at the same time. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I've seen people that have been very rude to individuals walking forward that are walking with their eyes down. And I make eye contact with them. And I just think, you know... I'm I'm not easy to I'm not the type that's going to roll over easy and mm -hmm. and they show a little bit more respect than what they otherwise do but mm -hmm. um, but you know it's it's a part of the bitterness the the anger in society today the um, the economic troubles I mean on on the surface we've got a plastic face that things look good but people are struggling mm -hmm. oh you know, a lot gosh. of people are struggling out oh there my right gosh. now yeah yeah and um, you know so. It, that there's a lot of conversation we could go uh, across that, but it, it is a dangerous place. I mean, even thinking about yes. Will going to Georgia Tech, I mean, I spend a lot of time praying. And Lord, I'm Lord so proud him. that he is. Yeah, we are too. He is a Georgia Tech boy. But that's right downtown. Ooh, right downtown. Honey, in the it's right by the varsity, too. A, a very <laughs> you know, a dangerous area. Now, the campus is like a little protected little mm -hmm, shell. Mm -hmm. But if you adventure into the wrong area and oh, just yeah. one wrong yeah. mistake, exactly. bad things can happen. Yeah. Exactly. There's a, a five block radius there. And then when you go just a little further north where the old yellow jacket drive-in yeah. used to be, where that used to be, that little area is, there's some danger. It's, it's like, yeah, there's some danger zones. Mm -hmm. It's very scary. Yeah. Is he excited that he chose Georgia Tech? Hey, well, he's excited, but that's what he was been hoping for, for, for some time. And we were, we were, concerned that the opportunity wasn't going to arise for him. You know how I see Will? Remember when you came to Murphy? Yes. He, he was a little boy. <laughs> he was, he so was a little eight-year-old, intimidated, quiet, very quiet little mm. boy who came to work with his dad. And he is today going to be at Georgia Tech. He is. That is so awesome. We're excited. We're excited. We're okay. excited for him, excited for the opportunity. But he he, he looks at it, you know, he sees that, that this is the big boy leagues and mm -hmm. he's got to... Mm -hmm. He's, he's got to have the Lord protect his health. He's going to have to dig in and work hard. Mm -hmm. um, not only is, is it going to be very challenging and, and take a tremendous amount of discipline from the football side, but it's also going to take a tremendous amount of discipline on the school side. George Tech's not an easy school. Mm -hmm. and, uh, so, I heard tell that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I heard tell, I heard tell you know, It's funny when you sit down and interview <laughs> the football players and they're all like, don't get behind on your schoolwork. Yeah, like that yeah, that yeah, was yeah. the one school that we, we went to that everybody was like, you have to focus on your mm -hmm, studies. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So uh, the Lord the Lord blessed him. And, yeah, and that's yeah. hopefully. Actually, I'm going to be in a meeting today with somebody <coughs> whose um, son in law is one of the coaches at Georgia Tech. Really? And I wish I could remember his name because we've had a conversation hmm. about him and what a wonderful young man he is. And I will find out now that we know Will's yeah. going to be there. Text, yeah. text me and let me know because yeah. I would yeah. love to. I'd love to put two and two yeah. together. Yeah, yeah, it it is so cool because my uncle was just buried a few weeks ago, and he was a Georgia Tech grad. And all we knew about Georgia Tech guys was they were really awesome, smart dudes. You know, just smart dudes. Yeah. Didn't even think about the sports end of it because it was just they were so smart. Right. And you know that's right. And he proved it in his life. So yeah, yeah, yeah. that is so cool. That is so cool. Well, we're going to talk <coughs> a little bit about something that's happening in Jasper tonight. The inspirations, the new inspirations, not to be confused with the old inspirations or resurrection, which are all some of the old inspirations. These new guys have got it going on. And if you have not seen them, you need to be at Shiloh Baptist Church on 515 where Goss Tractor used to be. Remember yes, Goss Tractor? I remember. Right there tonight and uh, get out and get to know them and listen to some amazing, amazing music. They are truly on top of their game. 
and they are doing the old music as the old music once was, and they're doing some really, really good new music, and you need to come and be there tonight in uh, beautiful downtown Jasper. Well, not downtown, but 515, it's kind of in town. <laughs> and I got to remind you, today is the last day I get to remind you about the rock sale in ball ground. The sisters are going to open up their daddy's building and they're going to get rocks and minerals and marble and put it on tables outside from 10 to 2 on Saturday. 10 to 2 only. So get there early. Today as I was at the office I was watching people and they were looking in the windows because they're anticipating this sale. What's it's going to be, be exciting. Yeah, yeah. That, we, and we don't know what they're going to choose. But it's going to be really, really neat. So please, a lot of people always stop in our office and say, how do you buy those rocks? And I said, well, you got to get an inside <laughs> deal going on here. So, so the ladies are going to do it. And again, that is this Saturday in downtown Ballground. So we're going to take a commercial break. And when we come back, Paul and I are going to talk, 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 talk about what's going on in the economy and what's going on in the world, and does prayer really change things? I hope that it does. We'll talk about that when we come back. Whether you're in the mood for chicken strips, a delicious burger, our classic banana split, or an upside down thick blizzard treat, we've got you covered. Hot and fresh food every day, every time. And delicious DQ soft serve make the perfect pair at your favorite place. Not fast food, fan food fast. Your Blue Ridge, Ella Day, and Jasper Dairy Queens are your meet, eat, and treat headquarters. Thank you for choosing DQ, how may I serve you? The mountains are calling and they're closer than you think. Farmers Crossing in Ballground offers creekside lots with homes beginning in the 400s. Walking distance to downtown shopping, dining, tennis courts, Calvin Farmer Park, and local events. It also includes a beautiful hike to Long Swamp Creek. Leave the car and the worries behind. Move in by fall 2023. Call Sherry Martin at 404-375-0590 or Evelyn Calhoun at 770-733-0779. Georgia Medical Treatment Center now has two locations to bring you the high quality holistic care you've come to know and expect. We treat neck, back, and joint pain with chiropractic care and injection-based treatment without the need for surgery or prescription painkillers. Our medical weight loss program can also provide relief while ridding your body of toxins, pounds, and inches while improving your overall health. Call today for a free consultation, 770-345-2000, or go online to georgiamtc.com. Hi, I'm Ryan Blaney, a third generation race car driver. And we dedicate a lot of our time to going as fast as possible. But when my grandpa was diagnosed with Alzheimer's, it was a very unexpected bump in the road for us. It's important to notice if older family members are acting differently, experiencing problems with their memory, or having trouble with routine tasks. Early detection of Alzheimer's can give your family time to explore support services, make a plan for the future, and access available treatments. If you or your family are noticing changes, it could be Alzheimer's. Talk about seeing a doctor together. Whether you're swimming in the sea, or splashing in the pool, making a masterpiece, or just making memories, writing a great American novel, or writing your term paper that's due tomorrow, Whatever you do in life, Farmers is here to protect it. For all your insurance needs, call Donald Curtis in Blue Ridge. Back. Okay, Paul. Yes. Loaded question. Do you pray with your children? I have in the past. They're out now. Mm -hmm. But but yes, from time to time we do. Mm -hmm. And do your children believe that prayers are answered? I believe that they do. I mean, in our household, we believe that that's the case. I mean, we, anytime that we pray, ultimately I ask for the Lord's will to be done mm -hmm. because I'd rather His will be done than mine. Mm -hmm. So we've seen their prayers answered and we've seen prayers not answered. I think He has better ideas than we do sometimes. Well, you know, yeah. I, I think a lot in today's society, 
scripture, and I can't quote it, but it's there that there's a way that seems right to a man, but in the end it leads to death. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, so I think about that a lot. The way that I want to go and the way that I want to pray mm -hmm. uh, may not necessarily place us in the right direction. But, you know, I mean, you ask the, I always tell Will before you compete, ask the Lord to bless your efforts and ask the mm -hmm. Lord to, to uh, protect you. Mm -hmm. And... And, and your children have been a great example of a home that, in my opinion, was run correctly. You're tough. You're tough as nails. I'm hard on them. You're, but you're loving as can be. So you have to be tough as nails to be loving because that's yes. what develops a good family. Yeah. You have to be tough as nails. I was a wimp. I was a wussy. I let my kids get by with all kinds of stuff. I wanted everybody to be happy. I wanted to create wonder for everybody. That doesn't always work. You got to be tough as nails, and no, you and have it, to learn that. And it, and it's hard. So there was a mindset I was talking with with a friend of mine. God the other was day. tough on everybody. Oh, he, when he, we think about that, he, yeah, he yeah. was he was hard, and he doesn't shield us from life. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So uh, one of the things that 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 Holly and I talked about was I said I, I'd like to raise my children to where they don't have to rely on us, right? Mm -hmm. So if they were sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. And, and they lost everything. All they had was the clothes on their back and they were dropped in some remote city somewhere in the, in the uh, world that they had the work ethic, the wisdom, the faith mm -hmm. to be able to thrive uh, or, or at least survive in that circumstance. Because mm -hmm. I've always been a little concerned when you look back at history and you understand cycles in history and we don't know where we are in that. No, we but, don't. <laughs> I but, think you know, we're in unknown territory. <laughs> we, we, we've been through a period of time where, where we've had unbelievable prosperity for 30 or 40 years. I mm -hmm. mean, America has just benefited so greatly from everything that's been taking place. And I, in my life, I remember the stock market at 1647. Mm -hmm. Think about that. Yeah. Think about that. Today it's <laughs> over 30,000. Uh, yes. Yeah. The Dow's over 30. I thousand. remember 1647. And, you know, and you got to think too. I mean, there was a period of time where you could buy a candy bar for for mm -hmm. 25 cents, mm -hmm. right? So mm -hmm. there's an inflation distorts that. 25 cents? I could buy one for a nickel. Are you kidding? See, that shows our age. I only remember 25 <laughs> cents. <laughs> Holly and I were talking the other day. I think I remember uh, paying 98 cents for, 90 to 98 cents for a gallon of gas, and she remembers like 70 cents. 16 and I'm like, cents, Paul Because you're Parker. older than me. <laughs> 16 cents in Daytona Beach, actually. 15.9. We were in a 65 Mustang, <laughs> and I said, Glenda, across the street, it's fifteen nine. She said, "Well, it's sixteen nine over here." I said, "That's a penny." She said, "We're not going across street for a penny." <laughs> things have changed. So, but yeah, things have changed, and and uh, you know, and it's by God's by God's grace. I mean, I've I've my prayer has always been, and I prayed this in front of the kids. You know, Lord, please please grant us wisdom. Mm -hmm. um, Holly was very good. I can't tell you how many times I would just lose it on the kids, and. And very Did you just, expect too much? I, well, if you don't expect a lot out of them, then they're not going to do much, right? Right, that's right. So I try to hold myself to high standards, but I, but I also demanded or expected out of them, and, and you know, knowing that they're learning. Holly read a book one time called How to Train Up a Child, mm -hmm. and she's reading it again because it helps her in, in education, but... Um, that developed a lot of our philosophy in raising the kids. Try to let them fail in controlled circumstances. Mm -hmm. Now, now, so I mean, it doesn't my, destroy them. I mean, my kids have done a lot of wrong. I mean, they've done a lot. I mean, you know, I mean, they have. Mm -hmm. um, but by God's grace, they've overcome it, and I've been really hard on them. You know, I mean, I've, I mean, I don't think Kel had a cell phone for two years. We had every number to his friends, and he was grounded, <laughs> and never let him go places, and. Made him work, and Katie was grounded for three months one time for skipping school, and she ended up marrying the guy she skipped school with. Oh, but, that's funny. Um, but, but I did, and I had to, and I always tell the kids when we get together and they start telling stories, I'm like, you know, when, just know when you have to go to counseling for how hard I was, just remember that I tried my best. I yeah. loved you. You know, yeah, I loved yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. So and I always prayed, Lord, please protect them from me. Mm hmm Right, help me to shape them, but protect them from me. Let mm -hmm. protect them from my weaknesses, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and uh, so we're never going to get it a hundred percent right. But, but I do believe that if you put your intentions before the Lord, and you, you know, and it's hard because the world pulls us this way and the world pulls us that way, and we get bitter about things and we get mm -hmm. turned down and we feel sorry for ourselves and we, we do all of these things. But if we, 
God's great in that if we turn back to him, he's, he's like, come on, mm -hmm. come on. This mm -hmm. is the way I want mm -hmm. you to do it. I'm not necessarily going to re repair all the consequences of your actions, but I'm going to walk you through the pain of what you have to go through. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it, it, it is humbling because, because I'm, 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 I'm grateful. But I mean, you know, my kids could have turned out absolutely horrible because I was too hard on them. Mm -hmm. In a lot of ways, I was too hard on them. But They could have rebelled against that, yeah. They could have rebelled. Yeah, and, and they did. But I think without Holly, I will say without Holly, and this, this is why I get so upset about men claiming they're women, if that's what you want to, you know, saying this is how I feel I am and things of that mm -hmm. nature. If you want to do that, that's fine. Mm -hmm. But But... Don't be competing in women's sports. Don't be mm -hmm. going into the women's locker room. I mean, honestly, mm -hmm. I, I think if a man went into the women's locker room and a, jumped in a shower when Katie was there, I'd, I would I would be in jail. Yeah. I would probably oh, yeah. be in jail because oh, yeah. yeah. I would yeah. beat somebody. But, yeah. um, but uh, I lost my train of thought there for a minute. But, but I don't know idea where I was going with that. It's a bad thing about live TV. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good thing about live TV because we're real. I was having a conversation with somebody the other day and. People see me as strong, forceful, get her done. Yes. I'm I see also you that. I'm also very weak, very dependent, and very um, withdrawn sometimes, which is something you never see in me because I do withdraw. I understand but that though. We were having this conversation and the woman who is my friend was she's very independent. She's very and she said, How do you feel about this? And we started talking about it. And one of the conversations was well, you know, I have this friend who asked her husband to drive with them to Atlanta because of the safety feature. I said, I would always ask my male mm -hmm. counterpart, partner, whoever, to go with me to Atlanta because I'm nervous about that. I can remember the last time I went to Atlanta by myself, I said, never again, mm -hmm. never again. I will not do it. I hate pumping gas. I married a man who owned a gas station. I hate pumping gas. He loved <laughs> pumping gas, and I'm so glad he did. I hate pumping gas. It makes me angry. I look at that as a man thing. I love to get up in the morning and cook breakfast. I love for people to say, that was really good. I enjoyed that. Thank you for preparing that for me. I love that. There are certain things that me, as a woman, as a mother, as a nurturer, expect to love and I do love those things. Mm -hmm. I hate when people act like I'll never be a I guess a women's liver. I'll never be a women's liver. I think women ought to still wear aprons, still ought to cook. I think if you want to go out in the workforce, my gosh, I've been in the workforce since I was 14 years old and I have had male employees for many, many years. But I will tell you I, I'm strong, but I know my boundaries. I'm a woman, and I'm a woman who wants to be open the door for you, be nice, be kind, don't talk down to me, don't scream at me, don't tell me I'm of no value, because I don't deserve that. No. Because we deserve better. No we all deserve, deserve respect to each other. Holly is amazing. There's just no, no, no way else to say it. Holly is amazing. She's a good teacher. She's a good mom. She's a great soulmate for you. Holly is amazing. Without her, you wouldn't be Paul Cracker. Oh, no. You I, made I mean, each other no. wonderful. No, I mean, I, I can't tell you how many times. That's, that's where I was going with that, that I would go in there and just absolutely unleash on the kids. Mm -hmm. Because what I would be afraid of is is seeing where this behavior is going to lead to. Exactly. So I would say this is where you're, never did I speak that over the kids, but if you continue this path, this is where you're gonna go, this is what life's gonna look like, these are the challenges that are gonna be there. You know, and I'd walk back in there and I'd be like, I did pretty good, and she would close the door. And say, uh -oh. And absolutely <laughs> unload on me. Yeah. And I would feel about that big. Yeah. And I can't tell you how many times I, I, I felt pride well up and go, well, you know, who are you to judge and all that? And then I'm like, no, this is by God's grace because in, in my own humanity, I'm not capable of doing this. You go, you know what? We are paired together mm -hmm. better for a reason. Mm -hmm. She can see things that I can't. Mm -hmm. I see things that she can't. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And and then I would go in, you know, and the kids were laughing. They're like, we knew it was going to be about 15, 20 minutes. We never realized it was Mama getting a hold of Dad until, he, until I started missing <laughs> I love it. it. I love it. And he'd come back, back in. I'd, I'd go back in there and I'd say, I was a little harsh. Yes. 
your punishment stays. Yes. But I'm sorry for what I said. Yes. This is what I meant. This yeah. is the fears yeah. that, you know, come out. I me delivered it wrong. I delivered yeah. it wrong. Yeah. Yeah. You know, come here. Let me give you a hug. And Kel would be like, I don't want to hug you. I, yeah. You know, you yeah. Know. yeah, 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 yeah. And Katie, so, um, but, you know, that's, that, that's trying to get it right. Failing, mm -hmm. getting up and mm -hmm. do it over again. And, um, you know, so... And, you know, and that's the bad thing. I have watched, one thing that's good about what I do is I deal with a lot of families over the past 25 years. Mm -hmm, sure. And, and I've seen tragedy. I mean, you know, like in your case, you, you I admire you and your resilience to I'm keep back. going. And you've I'm had, back. you've had tragedies that no parent should have to face. You have no idea. <laughs> it's crazy. I, I look back and go, wow, I made it. I made it. Yeah. But you keep taking one step forward. I have and, to. I have and, to. Uh, yeah. you know, and I imagine I had a, a client one time. By God's grace and only by God's by grace. By God's grace. Yes. And, yes. You know, and, and, but you, you have the ability to choose bitterness and, and give in to that. Mm. And Can I just tell you last Thursday night, I thought you were going to have to sign my bond. <laughs> <laughs> I That's a, one thing I love about I had you. a really, really good night, and then I just had a little experience that just, I thought, now the old me would have handled that differently. You about but, lost but it. But I handled it nicely. <laughs> Not nicely, really, but anyway, I handled it. But you I got tickled. You held it as nice as you I got could. tickled, but somebody told me Monday, they said, you're back. And I said, I am. <laughs> <laughs> I am. I'm back. But, but when you allow something, like if your children fail, you are raising a generation of children that one out of three of your children could have been a drug addict. Those Absolutely. are the statistics. Yeah. Those are the statistics. Absolutely. One out of three of your children could have died before the age 30. Absolutely. Those are the statistics. I have lived that. I have breathed that. I know that it is real. When our crew member here died, it was like the biggest wake-up call of all because today is Trace's one-year anniversary. He's been with us. He's been on this show doing his job for one year. He had to step in when somebody that he admired because the young man that I loved and had worked with me since he was 14 years old, producing anything I ever needed him to do, being amazing, being a backup, good, good kid, lost his life due to drugs. Yeah. I thought that I would crawl in a hole and die because I just couldn't handle it. And I said, the statistics tell us that one of one of we mothers, uh, whether it be Holly Kiker or Sherry Martin mm -hmm. or Jen Berger or whoever, we're going to visit our child's grave. Yeah. And so you have produced three amazing kids, but you didn't do it alone. It was Holly, it was God, and it was Grace. Mm -hmm. And and you know that you and, know and that. In spite of me, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. In spite of me, in spite. Did you of have Holly. a perfect raising? No. If I if I told and I'm glad I didn't. no if I told everybody really what my life had really really been, nobody would believe it because they'd say, "How do you have enough sense to get up in the morning?" And I survived it, but I I don't know what made me me. It had to be God. It could not have been anything else. It's, it's not my DNA. It's gone. Yeah, it is because my father. It was like a. a horrible choice. He didn't want me. He didn't have anything to do with me. I had, n I, had n I had nothing to ground me on a family. I had nothing that said family. My mother had a saying that she taught me years and years ago and it blew up in her face. No one before thee, my husband, not even me. And the man that she adored was running around on her with a bleach blonde. Mm. And every night, it was no one before thee, my husband, not even me. Mother went to church. She raised us in church, da-da-da-da-da. And all the time, Daddy's out there doing what he's doing. And, and it ended our family, and I became part of a divorced family in third grade, which I hated. That's tough. But Mother still felt like no one before thee, my husband, not even me. And I looked at her and said, are you crazy? Look at what he's done. And she said, well, but I kept the faith and I did what was right. Mm -hmm. And that stuck with me like glue because God's watching both of you. If you do yeah. right and she does wrong and then you forgive, then God's watching. And you, mm -hmm. we are taught to forgive. Oh, absolutely. We are taught to forgive. And I'm sure there are times that Holly has had to forgive you for something. Oh, my God. <laughs> Poor Holly. <laughs> I mean, yeah. 
it's me. Like I'm A plus personality. Ask me an opinion. Not to ask me my opinion, I'm going to give you. You the don't want to know it. Yeah. You don't yeah. want to know it. Don't yeah. ask. And yeah. sometimes, if I care enough about you, I'm going to give it to you anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Knowing yeah. I might not be right, yep. but yep. Uh, you know. I appreciate that because the people that, that have influenced my life the most have said the hardest things to me. Sure, sure. And, sure. you know, if I care enough about somebody and I hope for, for the people around them, then I, I will say something. I mean, I'm, I'm not going to go pick a fight, but, but, you know, and the people you don't care about, you go do whatever you want to do, mm -hmm. you know. Do you respect most women? Absolutely. Yeah. See, that's what I, I heard something that happened during the last election and somebody made a statement that they weren't can't vote for no woman. And I thought, what? The women are running the world. Right. And I owned 51% of everything we had because that's how my husband wanted mm -hmm. it set up. Smart man, women get some tax breaks. Mm -hmm. Smart man, women get some advantages. Smart man, women get, because it was his choice. And we, yeah. were, we were partners and we did things together. You recognize that. So if you don't respect each other and you don't, think, well, I wouldn't be here if she hadn't done this, and I wouldn't have known that person to put me in the catbird seat if she hadn't done this, if she hadn't done that. You have to look at that. I remember when Polly, when Holly was going out for the competition, oh, and yeah. you took the family and went to Atlanta. Yeah. The look in your eyes at what your wife had accomplished, it was like, you were 900% there for your wife. Oh, 100%. Yeah. I mean, what she went through to get in that kind of shape. Mm -hmm and the sacrifices that she made mm -hmm. were unbelievable. So yeah. I was so excited, you know, and it's sitting there, it was like watching my kids go. I'm like, yeah. I hope she does good because I think she looks better than all the rest of them. <laughs> <up there." laughs> I love it. I but, love um, it. you know, so, but, but, the, but the thing is, is we can't, we can't do it alone, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, that's, mm -hmm. so. When, Anybody who thinks they can <clears throat> is fooling themselves. Well, in the, in the business owners that I know, the, the uh, families that I've had the uh, opportunity to work with that have been hyper successful in what they do have got a spouse that they respect their opinion and balances mm -hmm. them, right? Mm -hmm. Now, mm -hmm. we can always start reading our own headlines and we can head in one direction and, oh, we don't need the spouse mm -hmm. and we can give in mm -hmm. to lust and we can give in to bitterness Big and we can mistake. give in to all that. Yeah. It can happen to any of us. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, one thing that Holly did great, and, I, and, and looking back, this is something that is absolutely unbelievable, I think, that's important. And uh, it's been reinforced. I've been listening to Jordan Peterson's um, uh, roundtable discussion on Exodus lately, and I've really enjoyed it. But somewhere in there, they were talking about the importance of eating together fellowship. Mm -hmm. And um, so I'm the type that I'll, I'll, I'll work. I'll work as long as I can physically stay awake. Mm -hmm. Like that's that's one complaint that she has for me is I can't sit still. Mm -hmm. I got to do something. Mm -hmm. I I I get enjoyment. No chilling time. You don't understand chilling time. I can, but yeah. but chilling time to me is a fly fishing trip in the summer where we'll hike four miles back in the wilderness. I'll slip and slide through a river for <laughs> another three miles. Wow. Walk four miles back out. Get to the. Uh, go for eat, a fish. Go eat, and we're <laughs> for sitting. A fish. There. But you know what? It's not for the fish. It's for my mind. Yeah. I mean, I love the I fishing, but I love the experience. I but get you know, it. Yeah. for me, it's not having those conversations and not having that responsibility mm -hmm. for the week. Mm -hmm. But one thing Holly demanded is we were going to eat together. Mm -hmm. And boy, you talk. Mother about did that. the same thing, and I love that. I love. I that. did too. I, I mean, love that. If, if I was 45 minutes late because I got into a conversation with a client that mm -hmm. they're sharing something in their life and then they just need somebody to listen to, mm -hmm. um, then my whole family waited 45 minutes on me to get there. I love that. And you talking about feeling like a jerk when your kids are sitting there, thank goodness you're home, Dad. I'm starving. I'm starving. You <laughs> and know? Mom wouldn't let us eat without and you. And Holly yeah. held that line. Yeah. Right? Then, yeah. then I never saw the benefit of that, but she did. Oh, I do. I yeah. saw my Absolutely. job is to go out, provide for the family, to protect them, to point them in the right direction, hopefully guide them to the Lord. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, saw all of those things. And, and it take you know, it, it, you have to love your spouse, but the Bible tells us we, we're supposed to love our spouse. Mm -hmm. We're supposed to forgive. And that's the biggest thing for us is, mm -hmm. you know, is the ability to, to be able to forgive and move on. She's got a lot more things to forgive me for than I do her. But, you know, when we talk about... Um, the opening to Heart of the Home says where families begin their day, end their day with conversation and, and mm -hmm. food around the table. A conversation around the table 
sometimes solves the problems. You know, Absolutely. a conversation around the table. And when I did this table, everybody said, that's a strange looking table. And I said, it's because I want people to feel like they're sitting at somebody's home at the table. And if you're sitting mm -hmm. at the table with somebody, you're breaking bread, you're feeling like you open your heart, mm -hmm. open your mind, you can accept what you're being taught, and then you can give back. And I think that's so important. And mother was always adamant about us sitting down at the table. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, all right. Uh, and you're you know, there. To them stupid Brussels sprouts you've cooked, I hated. But, yeah, <laughs> I'd sit down to them. So, yeah. And you're there and you're praying. And I'll tell you one thing that I, that I the moment that some, and, and here's another thing. Fellowshipping with other families mm -hmm. and being open and sharing your struggles mm -hmm. and sharing, having those people that you, you trust. And, and to trust somebody, you have to take the risk of them betraying your trust, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And, and we're humans. People mm -hmm. are going to betray your trust. Mm -hmm. and, and then you have to forgive. But it, as long as they're, you know, some people, all of us have different struggles that we're facing. Mm -hmm. But we were sitting at, at dinner with a couple friend of ours. I guess it was, it was too late for us to institute it with our kids. And we're talking about fellowship and time and the stories that come up. And they have this thing called, I'm not going to give their names and p people to know, called Free Gate. Mm -hmm. So when they're at the dinner table, their kids can ask any question or confess to anything without consequences. And, uh, and I thought, wow, that takes a lot of courage. <laughs> yeah. But at the same time, how wonderful to sit down in that area. Yeah. Maybe a child's done something they feel guilty about. Dad, it. I tried smoking. We, <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't know what stories, we didn't talk about yeah, stories, yeah, but I was yeah. floored. And I immediately was humiliated that I didn't think of something like that. Mm -hmm. And I thought, how wonderful for them to share that so we've shared and we tried it it's a habit you have to get into mm -hmm. but just the willingness to be there and 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 kids want to i mean think about it today outside of the dinner table if you've got your family at home when do you spend time together the world has your children a whole lot more than you do and there's something about breaking bread together that 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 leads to fellowship and mm -hmm. communion and mm -hmm. union and conversation and mm -hmm. being courageous enough to let your kids ask you questions you don't know the answers to. Well, I'm starting something with, um, I went and talked to Dan Poole yesterday at the Progress and I'm going to do, I was doing this up in Fannin County when I was working in Murphy, mm -hmm. and I'm going to do a recipe of the week and submit it with a little short story and I was telling him about how my peach cobbler came to be. And it was because Willie Cisnero, when you're so young, you probably don't remember Willie, but he and no. Sally got the Woodbridge Inn. It was kind of a wedding gift to them. No, I don't remember. From that. his mom, from her mom. And um, what a wedding gift. Yeah, yeah. The Woodbridge Inn, way, 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 way back. I had a one year old child when I went to work there. And my last name was Baker. And uh, we had just moved from Morningside in Atlanta. And so I was hired. And. I was like, I left a big, huge law firm in Atlanta to move to Jasper to raise my kid because I didn't want to raise her in the city. Mm -hmm. And so we get to Jasper and I'm like, Mama, I got to drive back to Winn-Dixie to go to the grocery store. She said, no, you don't, sugar, go to the Blue Star. No, you don't, sugar, go to the Piggly Wiggly. And I'm like, Mama, I got to go to Winn-Dixie. You know, yeah. you, you change your life. But I am so thankful that I came to a community you know, the, I hate to say this because it's somebody I didn't really like that, about a village raising a child, but, but it takes a community together. If, if somebody that you know and love or for a, a friend sees your kid out drinking and driving, they're going to pick up the phone and call and say, Paul, look, I saw one of your kids. I saw them. Mm -hmm. uh, they're drinking a beer. They're getting in the car. What are you going to do about it? I love that about our small communities. I love that about our small churches. I love that about we pray for each other. I love that. Had I not made a decision to leave the streets of Atlanta and, and my mother's dream, y'all are going to die laughing because I never did this. Mother always said, Sugar, I want you to grow up and marry a Jewish doctor. Well, I did never that. I married somebody who had a gas station, y'all. I married, doctor. you know, I, I, I did not do that. But um, I did the... Angela's dad was a genius, and the military did all kinds of tests on him. So when you think she was smart, it's because of her daddy. <laughs> but, but anyway, I, I know that together we make each other better. You make me a better person, and I hope I've helped you in some oh, way. Oh, absolutely. But, More than you know. I'm, I'm not very good at telling people those things. Mm -hmm. I've learned that as I get older. But, 
but yes, absolutely. We have to you help do. each other. My life is better because I know you. Well, I'm so thankful for that. We have the ability in these communities that we serve from Ball Ground to Turtle Town to reach out and make a difference in a child. And I think about, I went to Grady High School. I had an amazing home ec teacher. Your wife is a teacher. I can guarantee you there are a hundred families in Gilmer County that can say Holly Kiker changed my child's life. I Holly so. Kiker helped my child. And, and that's what we are to do. God commissions us to help each other, to give to each other, to love each other, and to forgive each other. And we have seen if you hold that bitterness, if you don't do that, if you're an angry, bitter old soul, then when you something bad happens, you, you can't handle it, you're not strong enough, and I have to walk by faith every single day. Absolutely. If not, I would not be sitting here today. No, absolutely. And one of the things I've been talking to Will about here lately is your self-talk, mm -hmm. right? So when we, when we pray and we go to God on our, on our knees, He has a standard that He expects us to achieve. We're, we're not going to be able to achieve that standard in our, in our human state because Christ was the only one that lived a perfect and sinful life, mm -hmm. sin-free life, mm -hmm. not sinful, sin-free. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the Bible tells us not one person has not fallen short and for whatever reason it just escaped me this then but we've all sinned right mm -hmm. so we know we're going to fail and it's like I was talking to Will I said your self talk right I've had to learn a lot of that don't beat yourself up go to the Lord in prayer and say Lord I've done this help me to overcome this help me to please forgive me of the consequences you know forgive me and limit the consequences if you can or give me the courage to walk through courage to walk through those so there's there's something about that striving for that standard Right, knowing that you're not going to get it, we're not we're not going to be perfect. If we strive towards perfectionism, then we're going to fail in so many ways. Mm -hmm. We're cold and callous. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But um, um, you know, we need leaders in society, and we need to embrace courage. And it takes courage to go forward. It takes courage to speak the truth. And um, you know, but the only way to get there is seek the Lord. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, and, and the hard part is, is we're, we're humans and our kids are humans, right? And one benefit of all. Sadly, the, we did have humans, yeah. <laughs> all the fam all the families that I have had the the opportunity to work with, and them being open and and sharing with, allowing me to walk in that journey through their life, you know, even more so than the area that I serve them in, is I've seen families do everything right, mm -hmm. and, and their kids make and, and their kids make bad decisions. Mm -hmm. I've seen families that have done everything wrong mm -hmm. and their kids make the right decision. So, mm -hmm. you know, it's like Holly and I were talking the other day and, and me and the kids were sitting around just kind of fellowshipping for the weekend because it's nice now when Katie and Kel come home. And, um, you know, and I, and I made the comment, I've come to the conclusion, there's a lot of things I wish that I'd known more, wish that I'd done different, wish that I hadn't done, but I wouldn't want to change a thing in the past because whatever happened in my life that the enemy meant for evil, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. God somehow used for good to yep. either make me stronger Absolutely. or or to teach me something to make me act in a little bit different way down the road. Mm -hmm. and, and that can't happen without without our eyes on God. And I do not keep my eyes on the Lord all the time. I mean, I Cut me off at a four-way stop and see how many fingers I wave at you with. I mean, that's that's <laughs> yeah. that's a horrible yeah. thing. I am a yeah. failure. I'm a terrible representation of the Lord. But I'm I'm humbled and honored before to to be able to try to strive for that. Mm -hmm. And that that He cares enough to, you know, nudge me in the right direction from time to time and slam doors in my face. Well, and and we've all had doors slammed in our face. I, I we got to say, Trace, can you pull up that picture of you? He he came here. He he started. He was in training when we lost our director, sadly, when he suddenly died. And Trace kind of took the reins, and he couldn't have done it. I, I will throw this out at you. Your family, your grandparents, your parents, they are molding the children of today. Now, not always do we get what we put into it. We don't always get that out of it. But I can say this kid was molded by such an amazing family, and... Um, when he was a little boy, he was watching this show with his parents, grandparents, whoever, and and then he comes here and he is now directing it, producing it, doing everything he can to make my day go well. And when it doesn't, 
he hears the wrath of me <laughs> because I, you know, I expect things to go well. Well, if we have a technical glitch, then I blow up. If we have something that goes crazy wrong, I blow up. That is life. That is life. That's part of living life. If you're living life, then you're going to have something go wrong. You're going to have something that upsets you. But then you forgive and forget and you just move on. And I was talking to him the other day about, and I, and I told one of the guys, I said, you need to get more training and you need this and you need this because we had a problem with our mic the other day. Well, and, and I said, you know, if in 60 seconds you see something go wrong on the air, come out there and say, sure, we're going to a commercial because we've got a technical difficulty and we'll fix it. So I, yeah, I blow up, I'm human, I'm human. But at the same time, they have the foundation that they know I'm not mad at them, I'm mad at what happened. Now let's get it right because the finished product of the Sherry Show is a combination of three young men. Mm -hmm. It's three young men and me doing what I love. And have I blown a gasket? Oh yeah. Have I failed? Oh yeah. I don't care. I'm, I'm human and I'm honest, you know. Yeah. It is what it is. And, and so I want the product to be something that touches your heart and touches your life. And uh, honest to goodness, a couple of weeks in a church, I, so many people, we watched the show, you gave us so much encouragement about moving to LJ. We came here 16 years ago because of you. That's why I do what I do. Yeah. And often I come in the door, something horrible has happened to me and sometimes you know it, and sometimes you have no idea what I'm facing. Mm -hmm. and, and last week I had a couple of biopsies done, and I was so stressed about it. And I looked at the doctor and I said, it'll take how long to get this back? And he told me, and I said, well, that's inexcusable. <laughs> He's like, no, it's not either. You know? <laughs> and I said, well, where are you sending it? He said, up, we're at Kennestone. He said, upstairs. I said, well, let me take it and tell them it's a rush. <laughs> yeah, you know? but they won't and let so you do that. I was a demanding me. I can be a demanding me, but I can also be, I will give until there's nothing left to give. Yeah. And I, have no I expect that. the same in return, and you don't often get that. You don't often get that. No. You, often you get somebody who takes and takes and takes. Now, that's a shot that Trace took last year, his first day here on the set. <laughs> and it was me and who was it? I can't remember. Who? I, I, I can't see. Y'all, these old lady eyes? Who? Uh, Aaron. It was Aaron's first day, too. Uh, it was Aaron's first day, too. And who's on the set with me? Jen is, okay. So it was Jen and I, the first day these two boys, and Lord knows, can you imagine being two young guys intimidated by me? Because you know I'm... I, You're going to chew them up and spit them out. I can be pretty tough. Not in a bad way, but No, way. no, I just want them to learn. And, yeah. and I said, when you're, when you're being that way with your children, when you're being that way with somebody you love, you're that way because you want them to do well. Oh, absolutely. You want them to do well. And you that's know, all you're asking. You know, and the people that, that I think back to Coach Alexander in, in football and mm -hmm. basketball in high school um, demanded more out of me, was in my face more, threw a basketball at me, you know, oh, things, wow. that, things that would you be on the front that, page of the you? paper. Oh, yeah. I absolutely remember it. Yeah. But he believed in me enough that, that if he told me I could run through a brick wall, I'd go. Now, he'd be yelling and screaming at me the whole way through, mm -hmm. but every major event that I've had in life because when he first met me he told me he said when I get done with you you'll have ice water running through your veins and what he means by that is I would choke in competition mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and the only reason really he's I mean there's more reasons but he was one of the key components in my life the first person I thought about when I won the national championships in water skiing was him mm -hmm, mm -hmm, when mm -hmm. I when I won the world collegiate championships was him mm -hmm, that's kind of like mm -hmm. underwater basket weaving there's not that many people mm -hmm. to do that <laughs> So my odds were a lot higher, <laughs> but still he was an influential aspect, but mm -hmm. I've never had anybody yell at me like he did either, but, but there's a way and of probably knowing. nobody ever loved you as much as he did. No, I don't, I don't think he, no, I don't, I don't know that, that anybody outside of family mm -hmm. would have ever loved me as much as mm -hmm. he, mm -hmm. he did. And it wasn't just me. Mm -hmm. It was ever, it, it was all the kids that played for him. That's awesome. But some accepted that and some didn't. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, when you think about the, the people in our lives, it takes relationship, right? I mean, mm -hmm. relationship and fellowship, we all have strengths. Mm -hmm. So if you're not driving and expecting excellence, then 
then what force is there for somebody to try to be excellent? Mm -hmm. Now, at the same time, that's your strength, somebody else's strength to pull you back a little bit, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. and, and together, we are better. Together, we're better in our marriage. Together, we're better in our families. Together, we're better in, in community mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because everybody has a role to play. Mm -hmm. One thing I'm not good at, I learned when Holly's dad was having all those issues. I'm not the type of person that can, can without massive amounts of stress, take care of somebody. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like helping Holly's dad go to the restroom one time was one of the most mm -hmm. hard things that I've ever done in, in my life. And plus, too, you look at it as you're a man and how will you feel when that happens to you? Because oh, that's all it, I can think it's about. So, yeah. I was selfish. Yeah. I was selfish. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's very hard. Well, we have to say, I was going to ask you this, and we're, we're running out of time. Say. But 100 birthday two days ago to Neil, and I was going wow. to ask you if we live to be 100, we better plan our lives well. Oh, absolutely. We? Yeah. So, so to Miss Neil Copeland, uh, yeah, she she was just 100 years old. I don't have enough money to live to be 100, so you'll have to knock me in the head in about three years. So, <laughs> it's, huh. you know, it's it's crazy, Paul. But we we do our best. We try to get it right. We're mm -hmm. not going to be perfect. No. 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 There is one financial thing if we've yes, got time yes. without messing up. Uh, guys, I do want to talk to you about some of the things that are out there. We can talk to, about the, the banking crisis and everything that's going on right now. But one thing I want to point out, be diligent about your, do not be over the FDIC limits. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's a moral hazard. <clears throat> um, who knows whether the Treasury is going to guarantee all deposits or not. I mean, the way this government's doing, they're just printing us into oblivion and there's no consequences for anything. Right. But the one thing that I will tell you, uh, government treasury money markets are paying north of 4.5% right now. Mm -hmm. um, there are CDs out there that are in the 5.1 to 5.2 range for the next 12 months. So if you've got safe money, don't, don't, don't just sit around and accept whatever's being paid on your money market account because, because the banks are keeping a large amount of profitability if you're not. Now, I don't want to put any banks in, in trouble, but the reality is be diligent about what you're looking at out there. Mm -hmm. Because like government treasury money market is technically the safest thing that you can own if it's all government treasury securities because it's backed by the full faith and credit of the federal government. So you don't have to have that FDIC insurance on top of that because it's unlimited as long as you own treasuries. And if our government fails, our money is going to fail with it, okay? Mm -hmm. We've got other issues that you need to plan for, and if that's what you're concerned about, then you really need to start making some this, uh, plans. But, but look around. We're in a society today where you have to shop. There was a, years ago, there was a time where you were going to get the highest rate no matter what, mm -hmm. but you've got national banks and you've got massive regional banks. Now, we do have good community banks here that you can choose to accept a little bit less to be able to support them because you're supporting something in the community that is a rarity now. Right. Okay, but be diligent. I mean, the difference between earning one percent on a money market and four and a half percent on a money market is substantial, and that helps deal with some of the inflation that's taking place mm -hmm. in today's society. Now, I think in inflation may settle <coughs> down a, a little bit here coming forward, but that's the one biggest thing that I wanted to point out to people now is because there are good, safe alternatives, mm -hmm. and we're getting to a digital society now that's one of the problems with the banks is you don't have to go to the front door of the bank anymore mm -hmm. and cash out you can go on your phone and transfer your entire account Isn't somewhere crazy? else yeah it give is. your phone number it is uh, 706-253-7285 and if you, have you want, questions if you want a free consultation look i've been doing this for 25 years okay 25 years now that's crazy i looked a lot different had a lot more hair a while ago <laughs> yeah we have some old shows but, um, <laughs> y y you know so so I've been through a lot of things. I've helped clients navigate through a lot of things. I've made a lot of mistakes in the past, right? But we adapt and we try to get better. So mm -hmm. if you're concerned about what's taking place out there, I normally don't talk about this that much on the show, and you want a second opinion, you want a free consultation, give mm -hmm. us a call. I mean, right. I'm, I, I, I'm not the type of person that's going to call you 20 times and try to berate you into doing business with me. If we have a conversation, nope. if I can help you, then everything else will take care of itself. Right. Right. Thank you so much. You're welcome. I love you, Paul Kiker. And love I too, love Sharon. you, Holly, for taking care of him and being good to him when he's mean. <laughs> yeah. Bless Yay. her heart. She's got big crowns in heaven. It is time to get out of here. The time flew by so fast. I'm sure there were some things we were going to do we didn't get done. But we will be back again, and I hope you have a great weekend. Enjoy your day. Enjoy time with your family. And enjoy time in the kitchen with your grandchildren. National I'll see you again too. soon. National Day of Prayer. Please remember to pray with your family.